We wanted to chat a little bit about insecurity and confidence and what is the difference between the two? How can we be confident? How can we kill our insecurities? I think with the world of social media um, and seeing people's lives on social media, it can be easy to fall into the comparing trap and insecurity trap. And um, I think a lot of that comes from when you just get so inwardly focused and you mm -hmm. stop focusing on the Lord and, and that he sees you. And then you're, then you start questioning, oh my gosh, like, does you... anyone see me? <laughs> yeah. As Christians, we're to live by faith in God's word, not by our feelings. So unfortunately with social media, with ministry, with academia, like name your whatever, even in, in economy and, and politics, whatever your domain is, there's this desire for, for, it's in our heart because it's a God made desire. The desire is for us to be seen by God. Like that's, that's the, the desire that's put in our heart is like, I want to be seen by God. Like, God, do you see me? That's the, the cry on every heart. And so with social media, especially, you know, where like, does everyone else see me, you know, likes and shares and comments and all this, like, does, you know, does anyone else see me and, and, uh, validate me and, and say that I'm a success or I'm a good boy or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good boy. <laughs> I just want to be a good person. And so as a Christian, we're not, we're to disregard all our feelings. You know, Matthew six verse six says, God sees you in secret and he will reward you openly. So it's like, okay, by faith, God sees me in secret and he will reward me openly. That, that is a faith position that we ought to live by as Christians. Proverbs 18 says, your gift makes room for you and brings you before great men. You know, what are we all so afraid of? We're afraid of being sidelined, of being left out, mm -hmm. of being, of never uh, achieving the desires in our heart or the, the vision that, you know, we believe God has called us to, to do. And so, you know, what, well then Scott, well then what is the purpose of social media? The purpose of social media is a positive vision. The purpose of social media is connecting with people according to values and vision. You know, so social media is a wonderful thing when you can look at someone else who are giving a positive vision and, or a testimony of what God has done for them and be like, praise God, like God, what you did for them, will you do that for me? Like I'm encouraged by that vision. I'm blessed by that. Whereas the orphan inside of us, the little victim inside of us is like, oh, it must be nice. <laughs> and then we're like, we're insecure. And then we start fighting with people and we start uh, holding grudges and offense towards people. When instead we can bless people, like bless what you want. Yeah. Bless the the visions. You know, that that's the great joy of, of media, social media, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Instagram, whatever you, you, you're using, is to put a positive vision in front of you and be like, God, like what a great vision, what a great testimony. Like that's where I want to go. That's where I'm heading. That's where I have faith um, that, you know, what you've done for these people, you can do for me. Yeah. You know, and so of course social media is going to be people putting their best uh, foot forward, their best image forward, whatever, and, and praise God for it. Now there's the other side of social media where in our culture, in our society today, victimhood is how you get seen. Victimhood is how you get sympathy and virtue. And so this is the other side of social media is people put all of their troubles. They put all of their victim stories out on social media of like, woe is me. And, and then people come and be like, oh, you know, and fan the pity and fan the victim uh, stories. You know, that's not great either. So you want to kind of avoid and that. And why is that not great? Like, yeah, it's because you're training yourself to be a victim. You're training yourself to be, um, to glorify your victimhood. Yeah. To be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the only time you can get attention is if you have a victim story. The only time you can get attention is if you whine. Um, and then as well, Matthew 18 talks about forgiving, um, other people, you know, so the often victimhood comes with a grievance toward other people. Other people have wronged me. Now, if you want God to operate in your life, if you want God to bless you, you have to forgive the people you have grievances with. You, uh, Proverbs says that we should cover shame. We should cover uh, grievances and trust in the Lord. So Matthew 18, where it says, you know, God cannot forgive you if you are not forgiving others. God cannot bless you if you are not blessing others. And so, you know, what that means is, of course, it sucks to have a grievance. Of course, it sucks to be a victim of other people's sin or other people's insecurity often. We have got to be so focused on that God sees me, God will reward me, God is my provider, God is my protector, God is my promoter, that I can bless anyone else. There is room, like there is space. We don't have to gatekeep and guard 
our like my little piece of space that I want. And it's like no, like you know, Joseph in prison, David in the desert, Abraham with Lot. And it's like Abraham says to Lot, he's like, you know, there's a, there's space. Like you can choose the valley land. I'll go to the hills or vice versa. Let us not quarrel. Because I believe I'm blessed. The Lord will bless me whether I'm in the hill land or the valley land. You choose yours, I'll choose mine, and, and I'll be blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed because God loves me. I'm blessed because God sees me. We have to understand that by faith, we are blessed. Even when it doesn't feel like it. Even when we're a victim. In reality, yeah. Joseph was a victim. David was a victim. They didn't act like it though. You know, they're like, God, you see me. You've called me to be a king or be whatever, some big dream boy. Like, you will take me in. Yeah. And there's so much freedom and security that comes from the foundation of God sees me in secret. I think especially as like women being homemakers, most of the work that we do <laughs> is in secret. It's in your home. It's for your children that nobody else sees you in the middle of the night getting up and helping your little baby or no one else sees you washing dishes after every meal. No one else sees those things, but it's like, God, you see me. And there comes this great, um, yeah, foundation and connection with the Lord. Um, we were reading this morning from Psalms where David said, um, one thing I seek, one thing that I ask is to dwell in the presence of the Lord. And I was like, man, that is just so powerful. Like if we think in every moment, like I am just seeking to dwell in the presence of the Lord. And obviously we always are dwelling in the presence of the Lord, but are we conscious of that? And I think when you're conscious of that, you become so much more relaxed and just at peace with, mm -hmm. with what you're doing, what's in front of you, with yeah. what the next thing you put your hands to. And that's the key is doing. You know, so how do you make room? How do you get into a spacious place with the Lord is to give your gift, you know? And so another thing that we do is we compare. So we look at someone who we work with or on social media or, or whatever, and we compare and like, wow, he's a 10 talent man and I'm only a one talent man. I'm gonna bury my gift and be resentful or I'm gonna bury my gift and be a victim. And no, it's like, even if you're a one talent man, a 10 talent man, whatever, it doesn't matter. Give your gift is how you make room. Don't let comparison with anyone else stop you from doing what you think you should be doing, what you think God has put on your heart to do, the duties, the gifts, the talents that God has given you to do. Do it as unto the Lord. Do it as unto the Lord and He will take you in. He will promote you. He will provide for you. He will protect you. But if we sit and bury our talent because another person is doing it or because someone else is doing it better, if God has got something on your heart to do, there's not enough of it to compete over. You know, we were just saying about it this morning of, you know, it doesn't matter how many churches there are in a town. It doesn't matter how many YouTube channels there are. It doesn't matter how many businesses there are. If God has put on your heart to do the thing, then there's not enough to compete over. You know, like, praise God, do it as unto the Lord. If someone else is doing it as unto the Lord, praise God for them, bless them, and carry on giving your gift. Give your gift as unto the Lord, and He will make room for you. One example that I was reminded of was uh, last, I think it was last summer. Um, so I follow this family on Instagram. They're a Mormon family and they're just so funny. They're just love life and wholesome. yeah, they're so wholesome. And they were on a, a huge family trip. The, their parents have this like mountain cabin, but it's like huge. And so all of like the six kids and all the grandkids all come out to this cabin and then they like made this family music video together and I'm like watching this family music video and I am bawling my eyes out because it was so beautiful and everything in me was like I want this like I want that huge family like just seeing the grandma and grandpa with all of their inheritance was so beautiful and like I couldn't help but feel sad like like loving it but also then like feeling sad like because that's what we hope for but like that's just not where we're at yet but I had this like moment of like God you see me in this moment you see these tears you hold these tears and this is obviously something so valuable to you and I'm not going to be a victim just because this isn't our story yet like, I'm not going to be a victim to this. And I'm also not going to give up hope that that's what it's in our future. And I also am not going to 
stop talking about it out of fear of hurting other people's feelings who are in the same boat as us. I think they're giving an amazing vision, vision of yeah. the blessing of having many children yeah. and what a joy that is. And it's like, okay, even though we don't have that, we're still going to talk about that's that is God's vision. ways. Yeah. Like that is a good thing to yeah. aspire to. And that's where you get like, like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego has those names. That's where you get like those guys where it's like, you know, we trust that God will take us there. And even if he doesn't, yeah, we will still worship God. You know, it's that whole thing of like, whatever it is that the, the desire on your heart is, we have to take God at his word and be like, I will trust in God to take me to that vision. And even if he doesn't, yes. I will die faithful. You know, I will die faithful believing that, all right, Lord, like whatever it is that you have for me, you will direct my steps. So Proverbs 16 says, make a plan in your heart. The Lord will direct your steps. And, you know, that's the plan in our heart. And if the Lord never directs our steps there, that doesn't matter. That's up to up to God. But it's for us to to hold a vision in our heart and be like, all right, Lord, like we trust you. Yeah. We trust you. And even if it never happens, even if it does happen, we will praise you. Yeah. And he sees those longings. He sees those um, heavy moments. Like Elizabeth Elliot says in one of her books, like he sees the moments when someone else gets what you've been praying for and you bless them mm. and celebrate them. Like God sees you in that moment and he notices that even when no one else does. And so I think that's the big part of this whole yeah. competition and um, uh, thinking there's not enough room for us. It's like it all comes back to believing that God sees us. Yeah. So God sees you in secret and he will reward you openly. Bless you guys.